Here's Cairo Santos now, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from MetLife Stadium. This is taken just shy of the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Under center is a six foot two, 225 pound signal caller, Aaron Rodgers. There have been very few quarterbacks in the NFL who have been as consistent throughout their career as Aaron Rodgers. He's been good for so long, and we've seen no decline in his skills. His accuracy and arm strength continue to elevate the talent around him, and his in game mistakes, few and far between. Now Hall to start the drive. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. The opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Throwing now is Rodgers. They're able to complete this one to Tyler Conklin. It'll be a gain of five. Third and seven now. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Here's Rodgers to throw. And a completion to Wilson. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's a give to Hall. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 10 yards is the pickup, good enough for a Jet first down. How this to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. To throw, it's Rodgers. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now it's Rodgers. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Rodgers to throw on third and one. He has a man, it's complete to Wilson. And he's gonna have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 23. Defense was thinking well in their Delta pass of just under 20 yards. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. On 
on first down, Rodgers. And his throw's going to be incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Rodgers to throw once more. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And that is incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. To throw is Rodgers. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Bears. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. He was under duress, surveying, trying to find somebody to get the ball out of his hands. In the meantime, the defense, they took it out of his hands. And when the ball snapped, I know exactly what the defense is thinking. Get a sack. Put him on the ground. But when you can also knock the ball free while doing so, oh, there's the bonus for you as a defender. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. Coming out of Ohio State, one of the top prospects in the NFL draft, and it was so big that they moved up in the draft to get him, to make sure that they had him. And, boys, he got the full package. Loves the game. Big-time arm. 4-4 speed. So good that another quarterback prospect said to him, what's it feel like to run 4-4? Everybody wants to be that fast. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. And a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. From the 50, here's Fields. That pass complete to Moore. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. This is Foreman, draw play. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Out of the gun, Fields. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 31-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's the first carry for Khalil Herbert. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll run with Foreman. He juked him. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. On 
first and ten. It's Herbert. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Well, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Fields. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Ninth play of the drive coming up and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Fields now to throw. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here, give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Here's Foreman. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. No score after one on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. They go option right on second and goal. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and make sure he spills it for a small gain. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Carl Lawson with a little how do you do as he gets in there for the sack. If you want a lesson on how to defeat an offensive tackle, that was pretty textbook. Is that a clip and save? Is yes. that, that's what's going to go around the league, and people are going to watch that and say, my goodness, that's how you do it? And I feel awful for the offensive tackle because we always talk about the athleticism of that guy who just beat him. Well, you have to be athletic to try and block that guy. Just in this case, the defense won. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. Santos' kick is up and through, and it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. From the six. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. They fumbled the last time they had the football. Fortunate that it only led to a field goal. 3-0 the score as they start first and 10. Here's Rodgers. Caught 
by Wilson. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. They'll give to Hall. Four yards to pick up, first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. On play action, it's Rodgers. On the throw, let him too much that time. It's incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. A handoff for Hall. Room here to run. And finally, he's taken down at the 18. 53 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. Well, that is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next-gen stats. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. On first down, right back to Hall. They follow up that gigantic game with the tiniest of pickups, one yard. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll go again with Hall. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. The Jets on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Throwing is Rodgers. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Zerline's kick is up and through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. Able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This is taken just shy of the 10. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. The drive starts with Foreman on the ground. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. 
Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's the option going left on second down. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. To throw his fields. And that is incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Now here's Trenton Gill now. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The Jets ready to get going again here on offense. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it, forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. They fake the give. Now Rodgers. Blitz coming, and down he goes. T.J. Edwards came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. And this came from the edge, and those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though, and they could barely get a glove on him before he got the quarterback on the ground. Open man here is Conklin. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Rodgers going to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, obviously searching for their first touchdown this game, partner. And that quick three and out, that's not going to achieve that at all. Give victory to the secondary there. They brought out tight coverage on that third down snap. Now the veteran Thomas Morstead on to punt it away. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Chicago offense set to get started. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Fields on first down. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to throw, Fields. Right side, Claypool's got it. And he's got Rome. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. We know play callers can be very creative in this game today, but sometimes when they've got receivers with speed like this, 
They don't need to design incredibly complex calls. Sometimes it's just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. In a sense, less can become more, and it was right there. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. From the gun, here's Fields. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now a second down and six. To the air again, Fields. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's Lewis. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Now Fields. Yeah, he's got Mooney. In the end zone, touchdown, Chicago. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Bears will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That was quite the call down around the goal line on fourth and goal. Yeah, they faked the run, pull it out, throw it, and as a defense, I've been in that spot before, and we see it all the time. You almost have to overcommit against the run. You have to almost sell out and say, they're going to run it, go make a play. They got fooled on that one. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 3. So the drive there took six plays. And finishing it all off was Darnell Mooney with a touchdown reception. Rodgers now on first down. Flush to his right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. the draw it's Hall and he is going to lose yardage here now a timeout taken perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry we'll see looking at a second and 11 now after the loss a final shot before half for Rodgers. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. No, I'm not mad at you for skipping halftime, but can I just have a sip of water real quick? Please, thank you. All right, let's go.
set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick from the 10. And able to get this out to the 25. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Off play action, Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Here's Fields. Throw left side complete. That's more. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Now it's Fields. He hits Mooney going across the middle. And he's gonna be taken down right at the 40 yard line. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. Here's a give to Herbert. And a good push up front and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. On first and 10, here's Fields. Now, quick throw there, gonna be batted away and incomplete. Then their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Fields gonna keep it once more. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave them with a third down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Here's Fields. And that will be incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. No fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. Well, they picked up right where they left off from the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get 
Keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. After the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. From the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's the Jets' offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. They'll start on the ground, Hall. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Hall again on second down. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick, more than a space eater. He just made a great play there. A third down now, those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. And able to find it. Puts it on the carpet. It's out. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You've probably talked about since training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, Boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 45 on second down, Rodgers. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Now Rodgers on the bootleg. Rolling to his right. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. On second down, a run with Hall. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they can let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Oh, he's going up top for Wilson. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those. But the coverage has been excellent thus far. 
and it was again on the last play. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. A run by Foreman to start the drive. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. The last run got six, now second and four. Back to throw. Fields. He's going to look deep for more. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. From the gun on third down, Fields. Over the middle, that's caught by Claypool. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. On first down, Fields. And Lewis has it, the tight end. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Now left side on the swing pass. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On the draw, here's Foreman. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. On second down, a run with Herbert, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. 
It'll be a gain of 11, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. By the skin of their teeth, they are able to convert on third and inches. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now Foreman. And he'll take it across midfield down into Jet territory. The tackle by Quincy Williams. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Fields throw here into the hands of Moore. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 31-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands that they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Play action. It's Fields. That's complete to Mooney. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. And just a yard to go here on second down. A handoff for Herbert. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Up the middle they go. Foreman trying to run inside, but nothing there. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. And we often talk about defensive end setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a cornerback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Throwing on third down, Fields. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. Santos' kick is up and through, and the lead stretches 16 to 3 now. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist, but time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor.
And after the made field goal, Santos back out there to kick it away. From the 10. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Time for another drive here for this Jets offense. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Rodgers now on first down. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now Rodgers. They'll set up the screen for Hall. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw again on second down. Rodgers. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league. Totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. He's got his man. That's Hardman. And he is going to have a Jets first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw their magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Rodgers again now. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. He'll get this to Lazard. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Now Rodgers, got to have this one. And that's going to be too high, out of bounds and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bears will get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 42. Now Herbert to start the drive. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Oh, 
have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. A carry for Foreman. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third down, Herbert. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. We'll see if the defense wants to stop it as they take the knee. They'll run with Foreman. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.